Outside of a police station, Jessica is sitting in her patrol and talking to her mom on the phone. Her mom is worried that she's become a police officer like her dad, who died on duty. She doesn't want to talk about that on her first day of work so she ends the conversation. Jessica enters the station with a bit of hesitation. There seems to be no one there so she goes inside to look. She hears some noises and sees a man in the distance, cursing. Jessica speaks to him, but he tells her to turn around and stop. When he eventually walks over to her, he introduces himself as Sergeant Cohen. He tells her that this isn't the new station, but the old one. She was the lucky rookie to work the last shift there. Cohen explains that all the calls have already been rerouted to the new station. She may have some walk-ups that she should send his way. In case of an emergency, she should call the station. Cohen shows her the kitchen, but tells her not to go into holding. Jessica asks him why she's there instead of a security guard. He explains that she has to be there because she needs to take care of the evidence. Hazmat will come to the station sometime during the night to dispose of it. He orders her not to leave the premises and tells her that he'll relieve her when her shift is over. Later, Jessica is reading a book and almost falls asleep. Suddenly, she notices something wrong with one of the lights in the hallway, when the phone rings. She gets a distress call from a woman saying that she's trapped and that all of the people with her might be dead. When she asks for the address the woman hangs up. Jessica immediately calls the new station. Since she didn't obtain the necessary information from the caller, they just tell her that they'll check on the call and if the calls have been properly rerouted. She hears something in holding and walks over to check it, thinking that it might be Cohen. Jessica reaches the place where the sounds of banging are coming from, but finds nothing there. Later, she eats her lunch in the kitchen and finds a long strain of hair inside her sandwich. Suddenly, there's a knock on the front doors, but when she goes to check there is no one outside. When she turns around, there is someone inside the station. Jessica tells him to leave the station and sees that he's peeing on the floor. She takes out her baton and tries to communicate with him, but when that doesn't go anywhere she chases him out. Jessica cleans the station and after that goes to the bathroom to wash her hands. She hears weird noises in the pipes and sees a pair of boots. Jessica leaves them outside for the homeless man. When she comes back inside, she hears another noise. She finds one of the bathrooms completely wrecked, then goes through to the station gym and into the locker room. One of the lockers still has a key in it and she opens it up, only to find a photograph inside of her and her father. She closes the locker and sees that all of the others have been opened. Suddenly, there's another call. It's the same woman begging for help. Jessica gets her name and she tells her that she has been taken on a ranch, then hangs up again. There is another call instantly, but this time it's the waste removal company. The man tells her that they will be running a little late. Jessica calls the new station again and tells them about the second call. They say that the girl isn't calling 911, but the station directly. And if she calls again Jessica should tell her to call 911. Jessica continues to read the handbook, waiting for another call, when suddenly the raft behind her starts to move. She checks it though she finds nothing wrong. As soon as she sits down it unrolls again and rams into the other rafts. Jessica hears another noise out back and follows up on it. She sees that one of the doors has been opened and hears another noise inside, so she calls it in before she goes to investigate. The only thing she gets back from the station is a song. There's another noise and an alarm turns on in the station. Jessica is reciting lines from the handbook as she approaches the site where the sound came from. She goes into a trashed room and when a box almost falls on her, she sees that the homeless man has entered the facility. He's looking for something not paying attention to her so she climbs up to get him. She incapacitates him and arrests him. Jessica takes him to holding, but he keeps resisting her so she drags him in. The doors slam shut and the sounds of screaming can be heard outside. The man assaults her and she stuns him. Jessica realizes that she's locked in the cell and calls for someone to open the door. A strange face appears on the window, scaring her to drop the flashlight. Suddenly, the homeless man has the flashlight and he's aiming it at her. She reminds him that she's armed. The flashlight lights the corner to reveal the homeless man still unconscious. Jessica asks who's in there with him. A child's voice can be heard. She bangs on the door again and the voice asks her if she wants to get out of there alive. Jessica asks for her flashlight, then everything goes dark again and two figures are seen next to her. The lights come back on and the cell door is open. She goes out and locks the prisoner in, then tries to calm herself down. Later, Jessica calls Cohen and when he doesn't answer she leaves him a message but doesn't tell him what happened. She pushes back to try and relax, but sees the word so etched out on the ceiling. When she checks the doors of the station, she sees a woman outside and tells her to leave. Marigold asks to finish her cigarette there, because she feels safer and Jessica lets her. Before she walks inside, Marigold says that she can tell she's a rookie. She tells her that she was in a cell next to the Paymon murderers that killed themselves in the station, who had kidnapped and slaughtered some girls. Jessica knows about the case because her father got killed on the scene of the crime and she knows that the criminals died there too. 
Marigold insists that they brought them back alive to the station and she could hear them sing some weird song in the cell next to her. They hung themselves with their bedsheets. Marigold finishes her smoke and leaves Jessica speechless. She patrols the station and finds a switched on TV. The TV plays a police interview with the Paymont brother that had committed the heinous crime mentioned. Two other TVs come on, playing interviews with the Paymont sisters. John Paymont is seen in a flashback, talking about the devil. The flashback of the interviews continues with the sisters, both saying similar things. John makes an absurd threat on the recording, as if he could be speaking right to Jessica. Suddenly, one of the chairs swings over to her and for a moment it looks like someone is sitting on it. It keeps on doing that until it knocks Jessica over. The phone rings and she rushes to answer. It's the same girl saying that the other girls have been killed. The people that have done that keep singing the same song that Marigold told her about. Jessica tries to make the girl call 911, but she tells her that she can't, so Jessica tells her to run and hide. Before the call ends, Jessica asks the girl if she's heard the name John Paymon and she says that she has. Jessica has started connecting some of the dots, so she calls the new station again and conveys all the details of the call with the girl. She tells the officer on the other side of the call that she thinks that the remaining members of the Paymon family might have her. He laughs and tells her that all of them are in custody under constant police supervision. He gives her the number of a police report and tells her to reference that report number when she calls again if she gets any more information. She thanks him and hangs up. All of a sudden she hears whistling from the other side of the station. Jessica checks on a room with some office chairs, but gets distracted by more noise. When she looks back, the chairs have been completely rearranged. Jessica has had enough and thinks that the other police officers are playing a trick on her because she's a rookie. Suddenly, the bell of the station rings and when she goes to check, there is one officer there. She begins asking him if it was just him that played the prank on her or were there others as well. He doesn't seem to know what she's talking about. Jessica asks if they play that same trick with other rookies as well. He introduces himself as Price and he tells her that he just came to check up on her. Price asks her to let him in. They walk inside the station together and chat. She thinks that someone made him check up on her. But when he asks her how her shift is going she tells him about the homeless man. He laughs and says that he's had worse than that, with one perp defecating all over his police car once. Jessica relaxes a bit and he tells her that he actually came to check up on her because he knew her father. She asks him if he was with him that night. Price tells her how it all went down. They arrived early at the scene, but they could hear the girls begging for their lives. The two of them went inside without backup and her father held the payments off, while he managed to get some of the girls out. He tells her that two officers died there, including her father. Price says that her dad was a good cop and that he'd be very proud of her. When he turns around she sees a massive hole in his head and as he walks by the window outside, he vanishes. Jessica goes to check where he went and calls after him. Suddenly, she hears voices coming from all around the station. Circling her. Suddenly she sees a body being moved inside the hallway. It begins to levitate and it moves in an unnatural way. Jessica hides for a moment, pulls out her gun and when she steps out to check if the man is still there, he's gone. All of a sudden, she hears the homeless man screaming in his cell. He begs to be let out of there and when she asks him what's wrong, he steps aside and shows her the three ghosts in his cell. Jessica keeps saying that it isn't real. The man cries and pleads with her not to leave him in there. She hears the song again and when she reaches the place where it's coming from, she sees a group of girls sitting in a circle and singing. The ghost girls turn around to face her with bloody sheets on their faces, while their reflections look normal. The door shuts behind her and they disappear. Jessica hears another racket outside and goes to the evidence room. She finds it completely trashed, with some male clothes placed out in the center. Jessica runs over to the phone and calls Cohen. He asks her why she's calling him and she tells him that she thinks she's seeing things. Jessica doesn't think she'll be able to finish her shift. Cohen belittles her about being afraid and asks her again if she'll be there by the end of the shift. Before he hangs up, he tells her not to call him again. She calls the waste disposal company to ask when they will be there. When the man tells her that he's not sure, she tells him that she'll be waiting for them outside in her squad car. Jessica leaves the station, but the phone rings so she rushes inside. It's the girl again telling her that she's escaped. She tells Jessica that she sees some kind of sign and Jessica keeps her on the line while calling dispatch from her cell phone. The girl says that she knows that she's going to die and Jessica asks her if there is something she could use as a weapon. She disconnects again. Jessica calls the new station and references the number that was given to her earlier. The same officer picks up the phone and tells her that the girl that has been calling the station is dead. Jessica can't believe it. The officer tells her that she was the last Paymon victim and was beaten to death with a bat. He says that maybe some of the members in the Paymon commune might have avoided capture and is paying a sick joke on her or it might be ghosts. The officer tells her that the Paymans killed themselves in the station and that ever since then there have been strange things happening in the station. A photograph drops behind Jessica and she hangs up the phone. 
It's a post-mortem photo of her dad. She sees more photos on the ground from the Paymon crime scene of the girls that died there. There is also one of Price. Jessica closes her eyes for a moment hoping it will go away, but when she opens her eyes the photos are arranged neatly in the hallway. Jessica hears screams inside her mind as the mug shots from the Paymon family are seen. Suddenly, the photos catch fire. Jessica wakes up on the hallway floor to her phone ringing. Her mom is on the other line, saying that she's sorry for bringing up her father. Jessica notices her gun is missing. Suddenly, she sees someone in the hallway and when she follows them, she gets knocked out. She wakes in an interview room with a woman. Jessica isn't sure what's real anymore. The woman tells her that she would do anything for John Paymon and that it was her that he should have taken with him that night. She asks Jessica if she's seen him there and tells her that she has too. Then the woman says that she's there to celebrate the one-year anniversary of his death and kills herself with Jessica's gun. The phone rings again and Jessica walks by the body, takes her holster and her gun back, then gets to it. It's the same girl on the phone. When Jessica tells her that she's dead, the girl starts laughing and the sound of the bat hitting her can be heard over the phone. The sound continues around Jessica and when she looks under her desk, she sees the girl's ghost. Jessica hides in the rafts and the ghost follows, searching for her. She finds Jessica and tells her that she doesn't want to die. The ghost vanishes and Jessica runs to the door, wanting to get out. She can't unlock the door, nor shoot her way out. Her phone rings. Her dad is calling. He tells her that she's driven like him, but asks her why she's trying to leave when he gave his life for the job. Jessica apologizes, saying she won't. He tells her that the man that killed him is still in the building and that she needs to do something about it. The homeless man suddenly walks past by her. She asks him how he got out and tells him to get down. When she goes to cuff him, he turns into an apparition. Jessica checks the homeless man's cell, only to find him dead. The words King of Hell are written on the walls. Jessica tries to call the news station for assistance, but she gets only static on her radio, then a scream and the song again. Blood comes out of the radio and a ghost appears next to her. She sees a projection of the Paymans doing some kind of ritual in their cell and then killing themselves. John turns toward Jessica and takes off the sheet. The ghosts are suddenly next to her and on the projection as well. Price appears as well and shoots himself. John almost gets her, but she finds a photo of her father and recites parts of the law enforcement codex. Her dad calls her again and tells her that they're coming. He says she needs to stop them, whatever it takes. A few men in hoods appear and she shoots at them. They tell her to come and find them. Jessica searches for them and ends up in the evidence room. She hears them again and goes after. Jessica shoots one and continues after the others. She takes out another one and incapacitates another. He starts talking about the devil and she shoots that one as well. Suddenly, she gets shot too. Cohen appears behind her with his gun raised at her. She turns and sees that the man she killed was from the waste disposal company. The real events play out in a flashback. Jessica can't believe it. She's killed all the guys from the company that were supposed to come and take care of the evidence. Cohen calls the situation in, while Jessica sings the payment song. The three Paymon ghosts appear and take her, 